Next, depreciation expense. So, ano ba ang depreciation? A reduction in the value of an asset with the passage of time due in particular to wear and tear. Kasi hindi habang buhay pareho ang isang bagay. Lahat nagbabago, parang kayo. So, paano mo ba masasabi na nagde-depreciate ang isang bagay? Meron tayong tinatawag na physical deterioration. Halimbawa, bitak sa building, nasirang pintura o mga kalawang o kung ano-ano pang nakikita mo. Next, inadequacy or obsolescence. Wala na sa uso yung mga gamit ng negosyo or obsolete na. Di na magagamit or may mas better pa na papalit. May papalit. Sad, pero ganyan talaga. Nagkulang ka man sa pananaw niya sa paningin ng iba, sobra-sobra ka pa. Eh, ano-ano ba ang mga kailangan natin para mag-compute ng depreciation? Una, cost. Magkano mo nabili yung depreciable asset? Pero take note, hindi lang purchase price ang considered for the cost. Sa higher accounting, malalaman mo kung ano-ano ang kasama dyan. Pwedeng freight or commission or installation chuchu, ganon. Pangalawa, scrap value slash receipt value slash salvage value. This is the estimated amount that will be received at the time the asset is sold or removed. Kasi karamihan naman may remaining value pa yan kung papalitan na ng isang kumpanya, di ba? Pwede pa ibenta. Estimated useful life. Kung gaano katagal ka magagamit. Este, gaano katagal gagamitin yung asset. For the computation of depreciation, maraming method na madidiscuss sa inyo sa higher accounting. Dito, ang gagamitin natin is straight line method. Sa pagkocompute nito, we have to get the cost. Deduct the scrap value to get the depreciable amount. Then divide the depreciable amount by the estimated useful life. For the recording of depreciation, debit depreciation expense, and credit accumulated depreciation. Si depreciation expense ay isang nominal account na makikita mo sa income statement. Ito ay isang expense at binabawas sa revenue para makuha ang net income or net loss. Sa accumulated depreciation naman ay isang real account na makikita sa balance sheet. Ito ay isang contra asset account. Ang normal balance ay credit at nineneto o binabawas sa asset account para makuha ang net value ng nasabing asset. Okay, para mas maintindihan nyo. Heto halimbawa. The cost of the equipment is 150,000. Salvage value is 25k. That means the depreciable amount is 125,000. Useful life is 5 years. Using the straight line method, 125,000 divided by 5 years is 25,000. Ang depreciation ay 25,000 per year. Halimbawa, na-acquire si asset noong January 1, 20x5. So, isang buong taon ang depreciation noong first year. By December 31, 20x5, may depreciation ka na 25,000. May accumulated depreciation ka na 25k. Ang carrying value na lang ni asset is 125,000. Sa second year, same depreciation, 25k. Ngayon, ang accumulated depreciation or naipon na depreciation is 50k. At ang carrying value na lang ni equipment is 100k. Fast forward, by December 20x9, 
tapos na ang buhay na asset. So, ang accumulated depreciation should equal the depreciable amount of 125,000. At kung mapapansin nyo sa carrying value, equal siya sa supposed to be salvage value ni equipment. Okie dokie. So, ito ang recording natin sa nakatable kanina. For the acquisition, assuming binili natin si equipment through cash payment, debit equipment, credit cash for 150,000. Every December 31, magre-record tayo ng adjusting entries of depreciation of 25k debit and a credit of accumulated depreciation dash equipment of 25k. Ito ang halimbawa na makikita mo sa balance sheet kung nasaan sa accumulated depreciation. Budget expense. Masamang utang. Ito yung sumasalamin sa utang na hindi napapangatawanan. Budget expense are receivables that are no longer collectible due to customers' inability to fulfill financial obligations. Sa pagre-record ng bad debts, meron tayong tinatawag na allowance method at direct write-off method. Sa una, from the name itself, allowance. Parang dito, an allowance or an estimate of the uncollectable amount is set up or recorded. Dito, yung allowance is nineneto or binabawas sa accounts receivable bilang isang contra-asset account. For direct write-off, the accounts receivable is directly credited. Ibig sabihin, tinatanggal mo na agad-agad yung uncollectible amount sa receivable account mo. Bara-bara. Ito ang recording pag allowance method and direct write-off. Both have a debit of bad debt expense. However, for the allowance method, Allowance for bad debts or allowance for doubtful accounts is credited while for direct write-off, the accounts receivable is directly credited. Just in case, na-realize ni owner na di na talaga makakabay si customer, a second entry is recorded for the allowance method to completely remove the receivable account. A debit of allowance for bad debts and a credit of accounts receivable is needed. Kung mapapansin nyo, na-cross out si allowance pag nag-write off ng accounts receivable. Eh, ano-ano ba ang mga dahilan na sigurado nang hindi ka makakakolekta? Una, hindi mo na mahanap si customer. Pangalawa, Si customer ay patay na or may malubhang sakit o kaya na bankrupt. Pangatlo, ginawa mo ng lahat pero di ka pa rin masuklian. Ulit, iyan ang entry for write-off pag allowance method ang ginamit. Sabi nga ni Nora Honor, may himala. May recovery. Ito ang entry natin kapag nagre-recover tayo ng receivable na ni-write-off. Una is e reverse yung ginawang entry for write-off. A debit of accounts receivable and a credit of allowance. Then, record the collection. Debit cash, credit accounts receivable. Tatanggalin mo na dahil na-collecta mo na. Computation of budget expense. Balik tayo. Paano nga ba compute? First, we have the percentage of accounts receivable ending balance. A certain rate is multiplied to the ending balance of accounts receivable. Next is aging of accounts receivable. The accounts here are classified as not due or past due. Example for percentage of accounts receivable ending balance. 
The following unadjusted December 31 account balances are available. Accounts receivable for 120000 and a credit in allowance for budgets of 15000 Budget accounts are estimated to be 9% of accounts receivable at the end. Ang receivable balance daw is 420000 at ang estimate na bad debts ay 9%. Ang gagawin lang natin is imumultiply si 9% kay receivable ending balance. 420,000 times 9% is 37,800. Ito yung estimate ng bad debts as of December 31. Ang allowance for bad debt ay may kasalukuyan na balance na 15k. Kaya kailangan pa natin itong dagdagan ng 22,800. Adjusting entry, debit bad debt expense to increase the expense account, 22,800. Credit allowance for bad debts of 22,800 to increase the allowance. Gaya ng depreciation kanina, si bad debt expense ay nominal account at nasa income statement at si allowance ay real account na makikita sa balance sheet as contra asset account. Paano naman kung 2% lang daw ang required allowance? 420,000 times 2% is 8,400. Initially, meron tayong 15K. So, meron tayong reduction na 6,900 sa allowance for doubtful accounts and bad debt expense. So, the entry is debit allowance of 6,900 and credit bad debts for 6,900. Dito naman sa aging of accounts receivable. Dito, ikakategorize ang mga utang according sa age nila. Kung hindi pa sila due at kung due na. Per category, may specific percentage to measure the allowance. So, multiply lang si balance and si rate to get the required allowance per category, then i-add lahat. Then, compare the existing allowance with the computed required allowance to get the adjustment. In here, the increase is 2,300. Adjusting entry, debit bad debt expense, 2,300, and credit allowance for bad debts of 2,300. Actually, this lesson will be further discussed in Higher Accounting. I hope you learned something and try ko gumawa ng part 2 for problem solving using adjusting entries. Sa totoong buhay? Oo, meron to. Sa amin may amortization table na to eh for depreciation and prepayments. And for the accruals, reasonable estimates. Yun lang, ingat, God bless! Dito, dito, dit, dito.